Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I just finished reading this amazing book called Scale. It's by Jeffrey West, a physicist. The Universal Laws of Growth, Innovation, Sustainability, and the Pace of Life, life in Organisms, Cities, Economies, and Companies. Sounds like a complicated subtitle, but it's got some amazing, uh, very, very deep results which explain a lot of things. For example, an elephant is really a scaled up version of a mouse. Some of the largest cities in the world, you know, New York City, Beijing, other, there's many other mega cities. These are really scaled up versions of small cities or, or, or villages even. Enormous companies, you know, the Googles, the Intels, the Microsofts are really scaled up versions of very, very small companies with just a few people. And the um, Jeffrey West actually heads or has been involved a lot in the Santa Fe Institute for and looks at complex systems and how to explain complex systems very, very simply. So how does this relate to climate change? Okay, um, I've got the book here, page 175 at the bottom. Okay, it talks about all living creatures. Basically, they get energy from converting ADP to ATP. So two chemicals. The, the, uh, Production of ATP has an exponential dependence um, on temperature. Okay, most chemical reactions increase with temperature according in an exponential fashion according to the Arrhenius equation. Biological reactions are no different. So for every 10 degrees Celsius rise in temperature, the production rate of ATP doubles. So consequently, a relatively small increase of only 10 degrees Celsius in the environmental temperature leads to a doubling of the metabolic rate and therefore a doubling of the rate of living of creatures. Okay, so think about it. You don't see many insects in the morning when it's cool. They have to wait until it warms up to increase their metabolic rate. So they're in kind of like a zombie dormant state in the morning because it's just too cold. So how does this relate to climate change? Well, it's, it's very clear, for example, the Paris number is two degrees Celsius. So a modest two degrees Celsius change in ambient temperature leads to a 20% to 30% change in growth rates and mortality rates. Okay, this is huge. This is enormous. 20 to 30% change in mortality rates. So if global warming induces a temperature increase of about two degrees Celsius, two degrees Celsius okay, um, that's 3.6 Fahrenheit increase, which is on track to do and pass very soon, then the pace of almost all biological life across all scales will increase by a whopping 20% to 30%. Okay, this is extremely non-trivial and will potentially wreak havoc with the ecosystem. And we're already seeing havoc being wreaked with ecosystems. We're seeing mass mortalities of various creatures, whether they be fish or birds or mammals, whales, all kinds of different species um, across the trophic uh, system, the, the web of life. So basically, a large, you know, climate change, large increase in temperature will have an enormous effect on agricultural production. You know, it, it's, these, these laws apply to plants and animals, to crops that we grow for our food supply let alone the entire ecology of the planet. Okay, so basically, Jeffrey West in this book, he develops a metabolic theory of ecology to try to figure out, you know, what our ecosystems will do. Okay, so 
what I've said is, in summary, okay, the pace of life increases with temperature. Okay, the metabolic rate increases with temperature. Okay, and what this means is lifetimes of creatures is shorter, proportionately. Okay, and I'll get back to that and I'll look at some of the details now. Okay, so first of all about this book, you know, one of the most influential scientists of our time, who people haven't heard of, you probably haven't heard of him, maybe some of you have, you know, he looks at the hidden laws that govern the life cycle. Everything, it's not just plants and animals, but it's the cities we live in and the companies. So he looks at how things scale. Okay, so the field is complexity science, the science of emergent systems and networks. Okay, um, the term complexity is misleading. The discoveries are so beautiful and so there's an underlying simplicity that unites many different complex and diverse phenomena of living systems. Like I said, our bodies, our cities, and our businesses. Okay, so let's, let's move on about this. Okay, so this is a review. This book just came out in May. So this is a review um, in New York Times, how the laws of physics govern growth in business and, and, and in cities. So theoretical physicists, Okay, um, so basically, you know, how do we relate an elephant to a mouse? Okay, well, obviously, there's a lot more organic material. Um, there's a lot more growth. Um, there's a lot faster growth in, um, you know, it, we're just scaling it, it up. But basically, there's a heart and there's, so there's a circulatory system. Blood is pushed from a central area of the heart through very large uh, arteries, then to smaller and smaller arteries until it goes to the very extremities of the creature um, where, where it pumps, carries oxygen, is carried in the blood and it feeds the cells. It allows the cells to live. So there's a circulatory system. Um, and there's a lot of similarities between that of a very small creature like a mouse and a very large creature like an elephant, the circulatory system fills space, for example. It covers all of the body of the organism. The endpoints of the circulatory system are similar. If you look at the endpoint of the vessels that deliver the oxygen to the cells in the mouse and the elephant, they're very similar. Okay, it, the things are just scaled up. There's also a respiratory system. Okay, so basically, um, Let's go on here. Um, so we're talking all about scaling, how things respond to increases in size. And we can talk about networks, so the circulatory system network, the respiratory system network, okay? And how these things, so these networks are space filling. They service the entire organism. The terminal units are largely identical, whether the capillaries in our bodies or the, or the faucets and electrical outlets in our homes, in the case of cities. Um, there's a natural selection process that optimizes the operation of these networks. So when an organism doubles in size, you can actually um, determine from the theory what the food consumption will be, what the metabolic rate will be, the growth rate, um, these things scale sublinearly, okay? Um, and there's a number four that comes into place, like a, okay, so one quarter scaling, for example, and I'll get to that in, in a minute, okay? So cities do the same sort of thing, infrastructure growth. The number of gas stations or the length of roads needed when a city doubles its size reflects similar economies of scale, okay? It scales sublinearly okay so some things also scale super linearly so larger cities produce higher wages and more patents per inhabitant but they also have more crime and disease okay so there's super linear scaling for some things and there's sublinear scaling for for other things okay so this is examined and you can talk about you know, decay rates of corporations, you can, death rates of corporations, etc. Um, 
when you think about it, you know, why does, why, does a, why does a baby grow up to be a certain size, an adult size, and stop growing? Well, the energy from the, the metabolic rate, the energy that is available goes into growth. It also goes into uh, repairing and maintenance of cells. So a baby, there's almost very, there's very little repair and maintenance of cells. So the energy goes into growth. As the body gets larger and larger and larger and approaches an adult size, then the repair and maintenance um, uses up all of the energy eventually and the growth stops. And then as the person ages, the repair and maintenance exceeds the metabolic capacity of the person and the person degrades and dies. Okay, so that's basically, you know, basically explaining how, how it works. Okay, so this is, some, a lot of this stuff is not new. This is September 2001, the effects of size and temperature on metabolic rate. So there's this, equa there's this general equation here that the metabolic rate scales as the mass to the three quarters power. And there's a factor here with temperature, which this is called the Boltzmann factor or the exponential. Um, it's, a, it's the exponential dependence on temperature. To the metabolic rate okay i'm not going to go into the details of the curves yet let's talk about this is a very this is a, a uh, nature um, review if you like on the book so it's talking about new york being a scaled up version of smaller settlements so there's very deep similarities in this stuff so you know it gives a plug for santa fe institute and how things scale okay it doesn't matter what you're talking about Okay, um, okay, so we can talk about performance of a city or metabolism, rates of wealth creation or energy consumption, economies of scale. Okay, so, so as things get larger and larger, how do they scale? And if you know how that they scale from the theory, then all you need to know is the number, the size of a city, for example, and you know pretty much everything about the city. You can compare cities all around the world and you can see how, how they, they're, they're pretty similar in terms of scaling. So the metabolic rate scales is the body mass to the three quarters. Um, you know, in large cities, people walk faster. The average walking speed in cities with more than one million inhabitants is nearly double that in towns of a few thousand, okay? For living things, it's the reverse. If an animal's small, then it lives fast and dies young. Okay, and we can talk about the heart rate and lifespan. Okay, so there's a lot of really astonishing things in here. So let's look at some of the, let, let's look at some more of the details. First of all, I have to define metabolic rate a bit better. And there's endotherms, they regulate their internal body temperature and ectotherms, they don't regulate their body temperature. Their body temperature takes on the rate of the surroundings. So with endotherms, humans, mammals, birds too, we talk about BMR, basal metabolic rate, and uh, with ectotherms, the standard metabolic rate. Okay, so metabolism is inefficient, it produces heat. Endotherms use this heat, like us, we use this heat to keep a stable body temperature. Ectotherms do not. Okay, the baseline metabolic rate of an animal is either the basal metabolic rate for an endotherm, temperature regulating, or the standard metabolic rate for an ectotherm. Okay, among endotherms, smaller animals have higher per gram basal metabolic rate, a hotter metabolism than larger animals. The same is true among ectotherms, although you can't compare between the groups. Activity level. More active animals have a higher metabolic rate. Some animals go into a state of torpor where they rest and their metabolism slows. Hibernation, for bears, for example, their metabolic rate really slows. Or estivation in the summer, it's too hot, you go into a kind of a dormant state. Okay, humans, you know, if we have a high metabolic rate, we can eat all kinds of food, we burn it off. Somebody with a low metabolic rate can eat a little and they gain weight. Okay, so I'm going to have to continue in a second video. Thank you.